collision with Don Henderson. He doesn't even around behind Sabrin as if to say, who are you again? Whether it's Jim Schoenfeld calling the referee a fat pig. Matt Cook kicking the back of a player's leg or Sidney Crosby not showing up in the handshake line after a playoff series. These are the most disrespectful moments in Hawk. And you don't want to miss the number one moment because it changed the NHL forever. The first one on our list is Toronto Maple Leafs Leo Kamara. After scoring a goal, he pats down the Washington Capitals' Brooks Orpuk on the shoulder as if to say, nice try, but you could have stopped me there. Next up is Pittsburgh Penguins star Sidney Crosby. After an on-ice scrum, just as the Philadelphia Flyers' Jacob Vorocek is about to pick up one of his gloves off the ice, Crosby uses his stick to knock the glove away. Sid, come on. Now, I don't know exactly what this Anaheim Duck player did, but whatever it was, the LA Kings' Drew Doughty berates him for, among other things, being in the minors for so long and still being on the fourth line. The ultimate answer to any kind of disrespect in hockey is to score a goal. That's the game. That's right. And that's exactly what Ottawa Senator Scott Subarin does here. It is his first NHL goal and it answers a bit of disrespect that's been shown to him by the Toronto Maple Leafs' Austin Matthews in a preseason. He made a bit of a show looking at Subarin's name on the back of his jersey as if to ask, Who are you? Because of this unnecessary headshot by the Chicago Blackhawks' Brent Seabrook, the St. Louis Blues' David Backus is asking, Who am I? Backus managed to get back up, but he's basically out on his feet. Chicago's Duncan Keith adds to this disrespect by yelling to Backus, Wakey, wakey, it's time to get up, you're in a hockey game. But in this next sequence, it's not the players that are disrespectful. Oh, no, it's the fans. After Boston Bruins, Dano Chara's face has been cut badly because he was hit by a shot. The fans in Montreal cheer the fact that Chara's been injured. And then there's this classic. After a 1988 playoff loss, New Jersey Devils coach Jim Schoenfeld has to be restrained after he berates referee Don Koharski, even calling him a fat pig and telling Koharski to have another donut. Next, the New York Rangers, Brandon Lemieux challenges the Anaheim Ducks' Eric Goodbranson to a fight. But when Goodbranson drops his gloves, Lemieux skates away like a little crybaby having a temper tantrum in the mall, and an enraged Goodbranson gets assessed an instigator penalty. Speaking of instigating, the Tampa Bay Lightning Patrick Maroon intentionally shoots pucks into the Dallas Stars bench as the period ends. Moreover with the Stars, this player throws the glove of a Winnipeg Jets skater into the stands and of course the Winnipeg player is not happy about it. This next one happened in a Stanley Cup final game. As the period comes to an end, Ottawa Senators Daniel Alfredson shoots the puck at Scott Niedermeyer of the Anaheim Ducks. This next example of disrespect does not come in a game, but when the Chicago Blackhawks' Dave Bolin is interviewed on a Chicago radio station about the way he annoys and torments sisters. If the Sedins become Hawks, will they still be sisters? <laughs> Twins Henrik and Daniel Sedin of the Canucks, Bolin even calls them the Sedin sisters. And of course, Vancouver coach Elaine Vigneault responds in a kind way about Bolin's interview. When you have uh, comments like Bolin, I mean, Obviously, a, an individual whose uh, IQ and is probably the size of a bird seed. One of the NHL's unwritten rules is that you never direct a puck at the opposite goal or goaltender after a whistle. This is like NHL 24 shooting the puck after an offside. Guess what? There's going to be a fight. But Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets series does just that, sliding the puck past Nashville Predators goalie Pekka Rinne. Next, the Washington Capitals' Garnett Hathaway is fighting and jawing with not one, but two Anaheim Ducks at the same time. 
I really don't know who that disrespects, but it's surely disrespectful to something or somebody. After scoring a goal, the New York Rangers' Michael Roop gives a Yarmer Yager like salute to the Philadelphia Flyers bench, while Yager himself is sitting there with his teammates. And then there's this. Ottawa Senators coach Paul McLean calls timeout to go over the team's power play strategy, despite leading 6-1 with 3 minutes left in the game. Take that! Next, after scoring a goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs to break a personal goal drought, a part of the Boston Bruins' Andrew Ferenc's celebration is giving a finger to the crowd. Oh, then we got the Calgary Flames, Matthew Kachuk, who for whatever reason, tries to steal a stick from the opponent. Kachuk gets the stick of the San Jose Sharks' Brent Burns caught up in the crook of his arm. But instead of giving it back, Kachuk grabs it and takes it to the Flames bench for himself. You gotta ask, just why? This one's followed up by the Anaheim Ducks' Ryan Kessler breaking one of hockey's unwritten rules. You shall never shoot the puck at or into an opponent's net after the whistle or the buzzer. But Kessler blasts his shot into the Calgary Flames' empty net, and of course, my Flames are going on fire. They are going to kill him. This one is beyond disrespectful, okay? It's actual intent to injure. With the Vancouver Canucks Kessler laying flat on the ice, the Anaheim Ducks Chris Prongers tries to stomp on Kessler's leg. And it actually looks like Pronger got the job done. Oh my gosh, Chris. Stunts like this is just why Pronger was hated in every rink, with the exception of his own teams, of course. Luckily, Kessler was not in. Speaking of dirty players making dirty plays, we have Matt Cook. Here, with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Cook kicks Ottawa Senators star defenseman Eric Carlson in the back of the leg with his skate. Now disrespect is one thing, but this, again, it's Matt Cook, so what do you even expect? Cook completely severed Carlson's Achilles tendon and Carlson missed the rest of the season. After being the third overall pick by the Chicago Blackhawks in 2019, With the third pick, the Blackhawks are proud to select from the Saskatoon Blades, Kirby Doc. And spending three years in Chicago, Kirby Doc was traded to the Montreal Canadiens and he was not happy about it. And he let everybody know he was not pleased with the trade. And of course, his first game as a Canadian was in nowhere else but Chicago. And Doc was booed every time he touched the puck. But then, the game went to overtime and then to a shootout. And guess who took the shot that could win the game? That is right, it was Doc. And of course he did score. And then he celebrates like this. Now that, that's disrespectful right there, golly. But it's nowhere near this. John Tortorella has been one of the most controversial coaches in NHL history, but one of his most infamous transgressions came in 2014 when Tortorella was coaching the Canucks in a game against the Flames. Because of previous bad blood between the two teams, Calgary's coach Bob Hartley elected to start the game with the Flames' fourth line. So Torts heard that, and guess what? He also decided to start the game with the fourth line. So what happened? Well, of course, everything was all good. They dropped the puck and the game began. Except, three fights started immediately and it felt like two more bouts were about to start as well. Fighting in this game was imminent. And in the wake of all that, Tortorella and Hartley exchanged some angry words with Tortorella looking like he wanted to kill somebody. But that was nothing. During the first intermission, Tortorella tried to burst into Calgary's dressing room. What was he trying to do? Fight with the whole team? Jeez, Torts, what are you doing? One of the greatest traditions in the NHL is the handshake between the teams after a playoff series, with each captain leading his team to shake hands with the players on the others. But after the seventh game of the 2009 Stanley Cup Finals, in which Pittsburgh Penguins defeated the Detroit Red Wings to win the cup, one of the captains was missing in action when it came to shake hands. Red Wings captain Nicholas Lidstrom was there at the head of the line with his teammates behind him. But Penguins captain Sidney Crosby was not. Instead, 
He was celebrating with other Pittsburgh personnel and some of the team's players who did not play in the game. Lidstrom shook the hands of every Pittsburgh Penguin player in the line and then waited for Crosby. When Sid finally showed up, Lidstrom was there, but some of the other players had had enough and headed back to the dressing room. The disrespect was a sore spot with the Red Wings and lasted in Detroit for a long time. And then there's the disrespect of hitting someone, and not just another player, but the referee. After getting smoked on a check himself and no call being made, the Calgary Flames' Dennis Wideman lays the hit on the linesman Don Henderson on his way to the bench. But not only was it disrespectful on Weidman's part, but it was also expensive as hell. He was suspended for 20 games, which cost him over $280,000 in salary. Now for number one, the one you've all been waiting for, the Boston Bruins' bad Marchand used his tongue to show disrespect. No, not by talking, no. Marchand used his tongue to lick the faces of opposing players. Not just once, but twice. First, it's on the face of Tampa Bay's Lightning's Ryan Callahan, and then it's on the face of Toronto Maple Leafs Leo Komarov. What is the old saying? If you can't lick them, but, but, Marchand obviously can lick them. Now, that's disrespect. So there you have it. The most disrespectful moments in hockey. Which one do you think was the most disrespectful? You can leave a comment on the one you thought was the most, or if we missed any that you think we should have had. And click here to watch the most childish moments in hockey history. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.